Hey guys, my name is Tim Parks. Chad and Dave up at Boondocks got with me and asked if I would shoot a quick video on the installation of their new product. It's an awesome product called the Landing Gear. Um, this product is made for pretty much any kayak out there. As you can see, I've got the Native Slayer 13 Propel. Um, I've actually already installed this on my boat, but it is so simple, I was happy to oblige and I took it off and I'm going to go through the installation process with you. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you what you will receive in the box when you purchase your landing gear. All right, now for your box inventory. When you open your box, um, you're going to get two stainless steel arms. Uh, you've got a left and a right. You should have two of the no flat wheels. You're going to have four of the black hitch pin clips. You'll have two orange bars. Um, I've actually already disposed of the short one. You've got one that's about that long. Um, these bars are used as spacer bars, depending on where you install your landing gear on your kayak. It depicts on which one you're gonna use. Um, this is the long one. This is the one I use on my Slayer 13. But like I said, it will come with two of them, this long one and a short one. It will come with two stainless steel bars that are drilled and tapped uh, 5 16 18 you're gonna have four stainless steel 5 16 set screws you're gonna have two black tension knobs you'll have four stainless steel washers You'll have four 5 sixteenths, 18 one inch stainless steel bolts. And you'll also have two black knuckles. Um, one is a left and one is a right. And I'll show you how to tell the difference between the two uh, here shortly. Here's a closer look at the components that you will find inside your box of landing gear. All right, now that I've shown you the components, the next thing I want to talk to you is about the pre-installation. Uh, this is the time to carefully think about where you're gonna install your landing gear. Now, I was lucky enough to uh, test one of the prototypes of the landing gear, and my initial thought was where to put it, and I did not want to cover up my access area, my gear area back here. Um, so the place where I mounted my prototype was back here at the very back. Um, the original uh, looked similar to this except for it was a solid extrusion. It wasn't two knuckles. And so I installed it back here. It worked well. Uh, a couple of the drawbacks of having it installed so far back was the wheels are so close together on uneven ground you can get to the tipping and rocking. Uh, another drawback was I had the wheels, the pivot point all the way at the very back and the handle at the very front. Um, so I had all the weight, pretty much, I was carrying all the weight of the kayak just because I had the pivot point so far back. Uh, last drawback, at least of the Slayer, was the accessibility to this area back here. Um, I had to kind of rig up a way to get the bolts and the uh, stainless bar back here to secure the landing gear down. Um, it was relatively easy. Uh, used a little bit of fishing line and some ingenuity but I made it work and I was able to get it installed but don't forget there's very limited access points to the inside hull of the Slayer so at least on this boat you might want to consider mounting it close to the front access point or having your local dealer uh, one of the professionals do it that has the tools to access these areas back here if you wanted to um, but nobody wants to go drilling random holes in their kayak so please think about where you want it um, you can contact chad or dave up there at boondocks and they will be happy to give you some tips some pros and cons um, they're not going to hide anything from you just like i said putting it back here it worked but the wheels were so close together you ran into it uh, it wanted to rock and tip on you on uneven ground um, but my suggestion is to move it a little bit farther forward. Even though you will lose a little bit of access area back here, um, you can mount it here if you wanted to, 
they're going to hamper your access to your little cargo um, storage here. You'll still be able to get it, but it will be very limited on what you can do with it. Um, I guess technically you can mount it in the front of the boat if you wanted to, but I suggest back here at the rear um, for launching, loading, and all those purposes. Um, so just think about it, plan, put it up here, test fit it, and do everything you can before you start drilling holes. Thankfully when you do drill the holes, the holes are on top. So if you take one over the side or if it rains, that's when you're going to have the chance of getting water in it. Um, these holes back here from the prototype, I'm simply going to silicone them and call it a day. So it's not that big of a deal, but the least amount of extra holes you have in your kayak, of course, you're going to be All right, now I'm going to go through the uh, pre-installation with you. Uh, a couple tools you will need during the installation of this is you're going to need a drill of some sort, cordless drill, power drill. Um, I used an 11 30 seconds bit. I wanted the hole just slightly bigger than the bolts just to make it easier. You're going to need an Allen wrench to fit your uh, set screws. And then you also need a half inch either socket or wrench um, to tighten down the knuckles when you get it installed. But first thing you do is figure out where you're going to use it. So my suggestion is you just take one of the bars and you insert the knuckles on it and now just put it in random places on the boat where you think you might want it. One thing to keep in mind is the curvature of the boat. The farther out you get it towards the edge, the harder it will be and you can get into a thing to where you can't install it because this stainless steel bar has to line up straight. Um, so the farther you put it out, your holes won't even uh, let the bolt go into it. Um, another thing, the farther in you do, you've got to take into consideration the thickness of the cavity wall. So whether it's a Slayer or whatever kayak you're putting it on, just take those things into consideration. Um, like I said, I first started out with mine back here. If I was installing it back here, um, I would use the short bar. Uh, you go a little bit farther ahead, you, in this area, you would still use the short bar. Um, so, I mean, this is a good spot to do it. You got a nice flat area. Uh, it would work out well. Now, it'd be hard to get your uh, backing plate back here and your bolts in it. So once again, you'd have to use some ingenuity, but you could get it done. Uh, move forward. I guess technically if you really wanted to, you could use your uh, track bars. Um, I wouldn't really suggest that because if you use the track bar, you're not going to be able to use the stainless steel plate. And this adds a lot of strength to your unit um, that you're going to need in case while you're pulling your kayak you hit a bump, you go over a curve or something like that and you put the pressure on that. You don't want to bust up through this thin wall of aluminum. Now like I said, this is the area. I chose to use on my boat. Um, you've got to use the long spacer bar for this. Um, but you can play around. As you can see, you could mount it up here. Like I said, one good thing about mounting it right here is on the top, they went ahead and pre-drilled and tapped a uh, location for like your Driftmaster rod holders or other, I think it's a 3 8 tap. Um, and then also on these knuckles, you've got the same groove track that works with pretty much anything in the kayak industry. Um, so you could have your light pole back here, you could put your GoPro right there, you could do a whole bunch of other things. Um, and like I said, technically you could still have access to your uh, storage area right here but you're going to be very limited on what you can store back there. Uh, if you're real short legged, I guess you could go even farther forward on your boat. Um, that wouldn't work for me because I'd have been running into this. I need to have uh, the seat farther back so you could have it even farther forward. Um, little suggestion, the farther forward you go, 
when you're taking it on and off your truck, you're going to have the potential of the rear of your boat dragging. Um, as you can see in the video, I've upgraded to the boondock shredder. So the farther forward I put it when I take it off my truck, um, depending on the ground and everything, you could technically have the back of your boat sitting on your rudder before your landing gear hits. Um, this location works for me. Um, I've got a Chevrolet Z71. It's not too high off the ground. Um, like I said, it works. I just got to bring the boat back. The front of it is still resting on the T-bone and I can set it on the landing gear and go. Now, when you figure out exactly where you're going to want it, you're going to want to square it up as best as you can. You don't want your tires and everything sitting like that. But one thing I want to um, stress that you do is that you mark your holes with your spacer bar in there because that helps keep your two knuckles square. So you're going to find your location, you're going to take into consideration the curve of your boat and the inside um, wall of your cavity if it's on the Slayer. Um, other boats you're just going to have to take into consideration different factors. But think about that before you go drilling. Uh, it's not a bad idea just to reach under there and see what lies underneath. Uh, you don't want to drill into any cables or anything like that. So you're going to get it set up. At each location. And when you have it set pretty much where you want, I suggest you just reach under and you put your set screws in. Alright, you're going to tighten those down and now your knuckle should be square to itself, to each other, and you've got your set, set distance. So then you're going to mark your hole locations where you're going to drill. Once again, remember the curvature of your boat and the inside wall of uh, your cavities, your storage areas, or anything else that you might need to take into consideration. All right, now we're going to get into the installation of it. Um, one thing I forgot you might want to have is um, some sort of sealant, caulking, or whatever. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to figure out where you want it, and then you're going to mark your holes, and you're going to drill your holes. All right. And the next thing you're going to have to do is reach in there and put your backing plate on. So... We're going to do one at a time. And what I do is I will take this area with my caulking gun, put a nice glob of silicone caulking. Alright. And you're going to line it up. And then you're just going to have to reach in find your hole it's as easy as that so I'm going to repeat Step two. Now don't tighten it down all the way. Um, you're going to want to have it loose. Then once again, you're going to pick it up. You can't really put too much because you can always go back and wipe the excess off. Now you're just going to repeat it for over here.
little bit harder when you try not to get in the way of the camera. There we go. Alright, now that you got uh, both sides started, now it's just simply coming back and getting them good and tight. Excuse me, mosquitoes are out. Just go back and ensure that they're good and tight. You don't want to over tighten them, um, and this is plastic. Folks, the main installation of your landing gear is done, and it really is that simple. Then with an old rag, I'm just going to wipe up. Main excess silicone. And what you don't get now, you can always just get later when it dries. All right, the last thing you're going to want to do after you get it installed and everything cleaned up is you're going to familiarize yourself with the function of the landing gear. Now, as you can see, if you're holding the landing gear in your hand, this pin goes towards this one, this one goes towards that one. That's how you know you got a left and a right. Um, what I'll show you first is the improper use of the arm. Now when I say it's improper, it'll still work. Um, don't think that if you put it in this way that your landing gear won't work. It still will. It's just not the way it was designed to. So if you slide it in and you see how the arm goes forward, that's not what you want. All right. You're going to want the pin that is welded on top to be towards your handling point. So, as you can see, you slide that in. Now you see the arm is kind of in a rear uh, location. That's the proper use of it. Now you'll notice there's some play in there. Folks, don't worry about that. That's the way it was designed. I can promise you that this thing is solid. All right. You if you break it, you're doing something you shouldn't be, and you're misusing it. But this thing is solid. I've already taken mine over stumps, curbs, stairs, everything, and I have not had one ounce of problem with it. But to use it, you're just going to tighten it down, all right, and then you're going to use your boat. Let's say you got it down to the water. You just loosen it. You're going to slide it back and you can either stow this away. If you wanted to, you could take it back to your car. But I found it most useful just to do this. You tighten it down. And I've yet to have a problem with my fishing line or anything like that getting caught up in it. They're not in the way. It's just an easy thing to do. You come back in, you get to your landing, you loosen it. Pull it out, rotate it, put it in, you do your other side, and you're going. You're not tipping your boat over to try to put a scupper mount in. You're not unloading your gear and tipping it over. Folks, It's this is landing gear. It's just like an airplane. The only thing Boondocks didn't do was make it electronic to where you push a button and it goes down and up on itself. But it really is that easy. They did a great job engineering and designing this product. Uh, it's definitely a five-star product. 
super strong and one of the absolute best things is it's made in the USA made locally in Thomasville North Carolina um, as you can see it was really easy installation it's not real hard um, so I recommend this for anybody's boat just want to real quick point out a few future features again um, stainless steel components you don't have to worry about rusting you've got your groove tracks for all your gear that you want to mount on it, extra rod holders, light pole, GoPro, it'll all fit. We haven't found one that it won't fit yet. Uh, you've got a tapped hole here. Uh, the Drift Master's work in it. I'm sure you could find some other gear to work in it. I've even seen people that um, they clamp a rod holder here, right in the dead center. There are unlimited uses, pretty much for this landing gear. I really hope you find this video helpful. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, call Dave, call Chad. They'll be more than happy to help you. And enjoy your landing gear. Good job, Boondocks.